The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up on a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So my question still stands. Will our loved ones recognize us when we pass from this world and go to heaven? Will we recognize them? The reason I raise that question is somebody raised it to me fairly recently. His name's Jim, and his wife of 66 years had died. And Jim was understandably very distraught, had been for months after. Once in a while I'd ping him, you know, just say, hey Jim, how you holding up, bud? And sometimes, stoically, I'm good. Other times he might get a little glassy-eyed and say, I'm hanging in there. But on this particular day, He said, I have a question. And he said, I haven't been able to find the answer. And he actually had tears on his cheeks. He said, can you help me? I said, well, what you got? He said, I don't think I'm going to recognize Liz, his wife of so many years, when I get to heaven. And she's not going to recognize me. He said, I've been pouring all through the Bible. I've been devouring the Bible, looking for it, looking for a sign of hope. And then he throws me the question, what do you think? And as I stood there, deer in the headlights, thinking, oh, Holy Spirit, please help me here. What do I tell this poor man? Luckily, we had had the same reading about the transfiguration that same day. And I said, well, we just read about the transfiguration. He said, yeah. And I said, who went up on the mountain with Jesus? And he said, Peter, James, and John. I said, who'd they see? Moses and Elijah. How'd they know it was them, I asked him. How'd they know? Moses had been dead some 1,430 years plus. Elijah had been dead some 880 years, roughly. So how'd they know? So that gave them a little bit of hope. And so we would bounce things off of each other once in a while and came up with a couple more Bible verses that I thought I might share with you today. Just a couple more examples. 1 Samuel, Saul, speaking to Samuel. Now Samuel had been dead for some time. And it says, And Saul knew that it was Samuel, and he bowed with his face to the ground and did homage. 
Old Testament. Second Samuel, chapter 12, David's son dies. And David says, someday I will go to him, but he cannot come back to me. Let's go to the New Testament, Luke 16. Do you all remember the story about Lazarus the beggar and the rich man who wore nice clothes, I think they actually said purple, stepped over the beggar on a daily basis in his doorway, and they both die and go to heaven. Well, one went to heaven, excuse me. And in Luke 16, it actually says, in Hades, where the rich man was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham with Lazarus at his side. Let's take it a little step further. How about Jesus? Post-death and resurrection. There was this road called Emmaus, or the road to Emmaus. And he sauntered up to a couple of his disciples walking along. And he knew what they were talking about. He said, more or less, what you talking about? They said, where have you been? Haven't you heard of all that's been going on? That's Luke chapter 24. They did not recognize Jesus right away, right? But it says they were kept from recognizing him. So I have to think that they would have recognized him unless they were kept from it, at least initially, for a reason. Then one other example I'll give you. In the upper room with the disciples. And some guy named Thomas who said, I'm not going to believe it till I see it. I want to put my fingers in his wounds. Which he did. Thomas says, my Lord and my God. Which, by the way, is a good little prayer to say when Father elevates the blessed sacrament, the precious blood. We were taught that early on in grade school. My Lord and my God. So now having said all this, I think it's good to keep in mind that our relationships in heaven will not just be like they were on earth. We're not going to look like we did when we were on earth. We ourselves will go through that transfiguration. Matthew 22, the Sadducees were trying to trick Jesus with a question. The Pharisees and Sadducees were always in trouble with Jesus. And there's a big difference because the Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection. That's why they were always sad, you see. <laughs> All right, it's not my best material, but <laughs> we'll move on. So they posed a question to Jesus. They said, if you recall, whose wife will she be in heaven? She'd been married a few times, having husbands deceased. Jesus says to the Sadducees, you are in error because you do not know the scriptures nor the power of God. And then he goes on to say, at the resurrection, people will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They will be like angels in heaven. That doesn't mean we won't recognize each other. Can you imagine the joy through the transfiguration that we all go through, being with our loved ones once again, being able to look directly upon the face of God? That's how Jesus was transfigured. He was looking at and talking to God, which we will be able to do someday. As it says in Revelations, Chapter 21, where, a place where there's no more sorrow, no more pain, and all of our tears will be wiped away.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up on a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 